Yeah. It's all good, man. Do it however you need to do it. It's good. Your, 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 your face is going to look a lot bigger than mine. Big head. You have a, you have a long... I've got a noggin, man. Yeah, dude, you got a stre you got a stretched out head. It's cool. I like it. And then you wear your hair so it goes even farther. Yeah, I figure why not just exaggerate it, you know? Yeah. Just really own it. Yeah. Hey, everybody, we are here with Tommy Kappel, um, the drummer, producer, extraordinaire, uh, member of Beats Antique, and uh, we're gonna talk about some music and stuff and. And just, I got some notes here, some questions I wanted to ask you. All right. I found you, the first thing I had searched for when I was looking up your credentials online was Sidecar Tommy. Yes. What's up with that? Uh, Elaborate like, on that subject for me. Well, that's that's what I kind of, that's like my producer moniker or whatever. Yeah. You know, the, my my uh, alter ego. Um, yeah, Sidecar came about actually with my old band, The Yard Dogs Roadshow. Mm -hmm. And we were on a, we were camping out after a, after a festival. We were at a campsite around a fire, and um, I told this whole story about how I wanted to um, have the band go on a tour of, with motorcycles all over California, you know. <laughs> so I start. I tell this whole elaborate story, and my friend's like, he stops me, and he's like, "Yeah, but you can't go." And everybody's like, "Well, why not?" You know. Yeah. It's mean. Why are you gonna say that? Yeah. And then uh, he's like, "Well, you can't drive. You have seizures. You can't drive." And oh. like, ah, oh, that's right, I can't even go. And our other friend was like, no, man, this is Sidecar Tommy. He's going to have all his computers set up and a sampler and all the speakers and everything. He's going to be rolling splits. And they're like, <laughs> when I got home from that trip, I was like making making beats and stuff. Just mm -hmm. messing around. I was like, yeah, started naming things Sidecar. There you go. That's it. It's easy. So it just, just kind of came about naturally. And yeah, yeah. It was like a funny thing. A okay. Funny. I was wondering if there was like you know, some sort of story because I mean, there, there's a drink called a sidecar, right? And yeah, I, thought, I, I don't even drink. Like, yeah. I'm like, I don't even, I'm, I don't even drink. So. Me neither. Right yeah. yeah. So there is an element of circus in Beats Antiques. Yeah, for sure. Image. For is, sure. Is that, do you all have circus names or is it just... No, I mean not really. It's I just it, it's. Can I have a circus name? How do no, you get one? No, you just you, that's the thing. Like, I mean, you can, but you don't you, you don't have anything to do with it. Okay. Right. It's kind of like a jazz name. Like you can't you can't get a name. Right. You can't be like I'm this. Yeah. I mean, you can do whatever you want, obviously. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. You can start calling yourself whatever you want. Right. But it's and, not authentic. And you can make you could even make up a story, you know, about it. But I mean, it wouldn't be authentic. But who would know? Right. I mean, really, like what's up? That's uh, true. Anymore? Well, you'd know. I mean, when it comes to... I no, I wouldn't. I still wouldn't know, even though we had this conversation, and then the Shit. whole internet knows about it now, too. Like, I don't know. You should maybe... I don't know, man. Shit. You just fucked up your whole, like, circus name potential. Don't tell anybody. Bill started calling me old wanky on this trip. Don't, don't... I'm not a fan of that one. <laughs> I mean... Come on, Bill. What's up? Old wanky. Old wanky. Uh -huh. I thought it was really funny when I when he walked in the first day and I'm like, William! Yeah. And he looks at me like, Bill. It's, it's Bill. <laughs> it's, it's Bill, thanks. That's my old <laughs> I'm like, oh. I have another friend who's like that. His, his real, on his driver's license name is Drew. It's not short for Andrew. Oh, weird. It's just Drew. Huh. Hey, Drew. So, all right, sidecar Tommy. Now, did, that was before you met up and played with Beats, yeah? Yeah. All right. Yeah. I mean, how, did, how, did, how did that happen? That happened, me and Zoe were, Zoe was also in Yard Dogs Roadshow. Right. Um, she joined a little later um, as a dancer, but, uh, so we were doing that, and uh, she is also doing like some some uh, belly dance, different belly dance groups and different belly dance things, and um, she can, was can out. I, for those of you who are unfamiliar, Zoe is the um, front and center dancer for Beats Antique. Yeah, she's, she's the, she's uh, part of the band. Hugely um, talented. Yeah, she's ridiculous, and so she was working um, with Miles Copeland, who actually is really into belly dancing, and he's also one of the, you know, he was like the manager of the police, his brother's the drummer, Stuart Copeland, um, and so he's he's had a long time in the music industry and stuff, and he, he wanted her, he was interested in, in marketing something that would be like this, like what, what Zoe would dance to, kind mm -hmm. of thing, you know, but original music, and um, so she said yes in a bar late at night once, 
And so she hits me up a couple days later and she's like, I think I said yes to doing an album. Can you help me? And I'm like, yes, I would love to. And of course David was involved too. Right. And we, we all had just moved in together um, at my warehouse in East Oakland. And um, I had a little recording studio in the basement, a jam space. That was a convenient engagement, and huh? So we just, yeah, we just made the album. Okay, the first, there you go. The first one. Yeah. Uh, Tribal Derivations, and we started in 2006. 2006. Released in 2007. Now I think I first heard your music in 2012, so I was a little bit late to the game. By that point, you'd released another album, am I wrong? Oh, we we released one every year since then, actually, which oh, is crazy. So, okay, so that, was fucking, that was four then. Yeah. Later, yeah. If my math's correct. But anyway, I saw y'all open up for uh, Bass Nectar in North Charleston. Yeah. Yeah, yeah were we DJing? Yep, you were DJing. Yeah. Um, it, was, it was Alicia, y'all, and then um, Bass Nectar. And yeah. Played until the rain kicked everybody out, but yeah. Yep, totally. I remember it was that. was awesome. And after that, I was a fan. I was like, oh, dope. I gotta get more of this music. Yeah, that was yeah. a crazy rainstorm. That was a crazy rainstorm. And Charleston's known for its crazy rainstorm. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Hey, man. Hey, what's up? What's up? Yeah. Sometimes, we'll sometimes homeless people just come on our bus. <laughs> oh, yeah. I am homeless. Though. This is my home. Actually. We're going to have to get you on this couch eventually, eh? Yeah, buddy. That sounded really weird. What? Yeah, do it, do it, Charles. <laughs> have your way with me on that couch. <laughs> Thank. Several albums later, here you are. Yeah. And how's the tour going so far? Tour's going great. This is a this is a quick mini tour, you know. Yeah. Uh, eight shows, nine days. You didn't get out. Cool. Do it. It's cool. Fun. I love it. I love playing shows. It's like, you know, no matter what's happening in the world and in life, like you get on that stage and <coughs> it's feel good for the moment. Yeah. What's next for you? What are you What are you trying to plug? You know, I'm I'm, I'm always trying to help people out. Well, I I'm actually working on a bunch of um, of sidecar Tommy music. Yeah. Yeah, my solo stuff. Okay. And, um, and where, where can we find that? Do you have do you have a SoundCloud or something online? We can yeah, I got a SoundCloud. I don't really use it too much, so I got to use it more. Yeah. Um, I'm kind of slack with my SoundCloud. I too. just suck at all that stuff, man. I don't I'm more know. focused on YouTube. Um, YouTube, I don't have anything on there either. I don't. Know. Oh, you that, man. YouTube's a platform, man. Oh, I know. It's just I just it it um I spend a lot of time by myself in the studio staring yeah. at a screen and like. I don't know. When it comes down to it, I basically just post a bunch of like photographs and stuff on Instagram. I don't really post too many beats or anything. No so I, and I'm like, um, I'm not sure how I'm gonna release it. I'd probably do like a few EPs, um, but I got a lot of new music I'm really excited about. Okay. And, uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's a combination of all the stuff I've been influenced by lately. Everything from like weird trappy stuff to like. Uh, Acoustic music to piano and psychedelic music and yeah. glitchy stuff, banging hip hop beats. Yeah, I hear a lot of hip hop influence in the stuff you write. Yeah, I'm yeah. I'm I, uh, I'm 43, yeah. so I've been around the block a few times and definitely made it through a few phases of hip hop in my life. Um, Which phase of hip hop do you align yourself with most, eh? Uh, probably like mid 90s East Coast New York. Dope. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I grew up in D.C., so I was influenced by a lot of go-go music and yep. stuff like that, and more like live party funk. And then, um, I was only recently introduced to go-go. I didn't know it was a separate uh, entire dude, fucking genre. Oh, it's a genre. whole. Yeah, it's a whole world. I it's didn't pretty know that. Amazing. It's pretty. It's it's. Yeah, it's pretty off the hook. Um, and then, and it's also like a lot of drumming and stuff. So that's yeah. why, you know, like um, trouble funk would have like. Seven drummers on stage or something like that. Actually, speaking of that, have you ever heard of Prince Rama? Uh, no. I'm not trying to plug another band while we're talking, but like... Well, that's fine. Prince Rama, they do sure. like... It's an updated kind of NRG go-go type of thing. Interesting. They're, they're dope. Yeah. Sweet, I'll have to look at it. They play that. a little bit yeah. with Androgyny too, the lead singer. You can't tell. It's like, oh, what's, what's going Good. on? Good. Yeah. Good. Normal's boring. It is boring. Um, you know, and, and I... And so... I, I feel like when I got to hit... When I got to New York... There was a lot of stuff that was just happening then that was that was really inspiring. A lot of that was on the instrumental side um, for me personally. Just just like just feeling all those beats and all the the different places people were getting their music from to sample and stuff gave me the idea that like what would be really cool is just if, if I could just make all that the background stuff myself, you know, right? And actually like record people 
like brass bands and strings and piano and all this acoustic instruments and like things that they were using to sample and then like and then make a track out of that stuff and like I would just sample myself yeah you know and so it was super fun it was like it was like a really good exploratory time for me um, there was a lot of like there was a lot of jazz crossover stuff happening you know jazz musicians playing with hip-hop groups and like um, and MCs and spoken word stuff and then and then like a lot of those guys were also doing like live drum and bass and stuff like that so that was super fun I got into that and then I moved to uh, San Francisco after New York City and like you know found like the Burning Man culture almost right away and uh, that just took a total spin off into nowhere land so are you um, a burner? You could say that. I mean, I, I mean, Burning Man's fun. Yeah, I like it. It's, it's like a. I'm not sure how, you know, um, in 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 grade ingrained I am right. into it, you know. But it's like it's not like it's a part of my, you know, everyday. It's thing, not part of your identity. Thinking. No, no, no. But I've been there 17 times, so I think. Okay. You know, I'm, so you're familiar with it? I like got invited the first <laughs> time and then I took like one or two years off, I think. Yeah. Since then, so. Yeah. I mean, it's where a lot of, it's where I get to hang out with a lot of my friends that I don't get to see. And, and nowadays it's it's a place where, honestly, it's it's fun to just let go and, and be free from all the BS of the world. Mm. Yeah. And I and it's fun to play as Beats Antique. We, we get a, a big crowd out there. So I bet, yeah. It's kind of, it's kind of a, it's a fun moment. We could talk about the one the one thing that I didn't say is my education. Let's hear going, about it. Going to uh, school and stuff. Let's so, hear about it. Well, so like I grew up in marching band and play with you here. There we go. Yeah, it always is, man. Those damn feathers of the band are my existence sometimes. Um, <laughs> hello. <laughs> um, <clears throat> well, I grew up like studying music. Um, my both my parents were music teachers and um, grew up playing piano and. Um, Studying percussion and stuff. Hey, hey come Are you guys on in. Filming? Yeah. More homeless people just getting on the bus. It's mm. weird. You gotta, you gotta figure out what the, you know, what the solution that <laughs> well, is. Well, we're just, we're just very nice people. Yeah. Yeah, very accommodating. Both your parents are music teachers. Yeah, both music teachers, um, and um, and just let me explore music as much as I wanted to. So they that didn't, was really cool. They yeah. didn't put restrictions on what you could and couldn't listen to. Oh hell no. No way. Mine did a little bit when I was a kid. See, no, see, see, like, no, and I didn't run into any of that stuff. And I had friends whose parents did, and yeah. and like friends who just like, and and music for them became this rebellion thing, right? You know, and I just never went through that phase because I never had to. Right, that makes it, sense. It, it just it just wasn't like that. I mean, I guess I kind of did like when I was in more like. Um, traditional band or like more like symphonic bands and like classical music stuff I had to like rein in my attitude and stuff like that but it wasn't <clears throat> it wasn't oppressive or anything like that um, and so I loved all kinds of different kinds of music and, and didn't really I could see the beauty in all of it yeah. and didn't really have to you know didn't really have a uh, there wasn't anything I wanted to stay away from. There was more right. I wanted to collect and you know find out all this. You want to hear it all? Yeah, all this yeah. stuff, and go see things. And wow, there's like full on thunderstorm. Yeah, rain's coming down here in Spokane, Washington. Wow. There's probably a, there's probably a rainbow. Yeah. Seeing how the sun is. This thing's waterproof, right? Nope. No, unfortunately, <laughs> it's not. Like we we don't um, we don't have a roof in our bus. Mm. Can't afford it. Dang. Yeah. Wasn't in the budget. Nah, insurance is a little bit more expensive, but <laughs> and it gets cold. Like, were you, ever, then, were you ever an orchestra nerd? Oh yeah, for sure. Me too. Yeah, for sure. Right I did. Mean, our our symphonic band at our high school is top notch. Played really up good. red bass in the symphonic band. Oh cool. Yeah, yeah I played percussion. I played timpani, uh, marimba. Uh, all that's the, cool. Yeah, mar all the mallet yeah. instruments and stuff. Yeah. Did you do four four mallets? Yeah. That's dope. Yeah. Yeah. And then, um, and then after that, I went to um, I went to Berklee College of Music in Boston. Okay. And um, actually, that's where I met um, Adam Deitch and all those the lettuce guys and stuff. Yeah. You know, and like we all went there at the same time. I've and heard that had, name before. What's what's he known for? Adam Deitch. Yeah. He is like an amazing drummer. He's just a badass drummer. That's and probably where for a great name. human being. And he's the drummer for Lettuce, and 
he he uh, he played with Pretty Lights for for a while. I'm not sure if he's still doing that. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, he just. He's probably come up in my searches. I'm I'm learning drumming. I'm in like the intermediate phase right now. Oh yeah, you so should I'm definitely watching check him tutorials. Out. He is like, him. he's ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. He's yeah. just such a badass drummer. He's got such a great pocket. Both his parents were um, musicians too, but they were both drummers, like right. funk drummers too. Yeah. So I'm like, that's not fair. You know, like <laughs> he was born into the group. Yeah. Jerk, yeah. Jerk. Nah, I'm just kidding. I love you, buddy. Uh, but you know. And and there at Berkeley, it really gave me the the um, opportunity to discover music that I really had never heard of, like music from around the world, which actually led to me being and making music like I'm making now, right? And with Beats Antique and like having percussion ensembles where we learn all about music from all over the world and stuff, and then we would. Like our teacher was super cool. He would just have he would just have like whatever instruments we had. So we were using like a lot of Western instruments, but playing playing beats from Africa, from Asia, from the Middle East and stuff, like on Western instruments. Sure. And so it it ingrained in my brain that it it didn't really matter what you played it on. Right. It just needed to sound a certain way. Right. And have like a certain like tonal principle to it. And sort of then, getting rid of the whole bar line mentality. Well yeah, you just end up you just end up like breaking rules left and right. Right. You know? And you gotta play outside the grid. Yeah, and so um so when this project came up it seemed like a perfect fit for like all those reasons because I was able to play those beats and understand where they came came from and stuff and then cut that all up and redo it. Yeah. You know, over and over again and like till you know, you, you come up with something just new and different. Yeah. But that 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 part of my education was really was really important. I also, when I was at Berkeley, I also learned a lot about studios and recording and engineering and production stuff and like film scoring and songwriting and all sorts of things that, you know, it pretty much took all of my interests, brought them all together, and then like I left with like a lot more in my sack. Yeah. You know? And um just took off and been going ever since. Well at the risk of uh getting rained out here. Yeah, I mean it's almost done though, it looks like. I mean it looks sunny again. Weird. It's totally sunny out there. Well guys, this is Sidecar Tommy. You can check him out as Sidecar Tommy and you can also check him out as the drummer, producer for Beats Antique. You can catch him on the road for the rest of the tour this spring if I get this video up in time. Um, <laughs> otherwise, just look this guy up. Great I'm dude. Around. Great human. Thanks for doing this with me. You're welcome. <laughs> Peace. Until next time. Bye.